For example, there are over 800 Jewish summer camps in North America. It is impossible for us, a staff of 17, to understand and know which one needs what, which one might be better at this or worse at that. So we fund the Foundation for Jewish Camping, a national intermediary, to work through them to the system. The same, as Rick mentioned, applies to the Hillel movement. We fund nationally with Hillel International being a major recipient of our grants, having received an excess of $20 million. When it works well, and sometimes it doesn't, but when it works well, system change filters throughout the entire network. San Francisco Hillel is a great example of the impact we are trying to make happen. Money is the easy part, and I really do mean that. The Jewish community lives in the most resource-rich time of our history. Let's be clear, the hard work is done each and every day by a dedicated group of professional and lay leaders. Please join me in thanking them. invest in talent, and optimize its peer-to-peer -peer engagement. With this investment, and the aforementioned incredible leadership team, SF Hillel has done incredible work. Over the past four years, it has expanded from just not just SF State, but is also serving Jewish students at USF, UCSF, and US Hastings, UC Hastings, and now works with over a thousand students across San Francisco. As you saw in Ollie's wonderful presentation, they've started to overcome major challenges at San Francisco State in incredibly positive and thoughtful ways. Not content with working just locally, SFL is having a major impact in the national movement too. We see and feel that from the foundation, giving talks and taking leadership in major Jewish public occasions on important subjects, as Ollie mentioned, ranging from birthright, to pluralistic Judaism and the issues around that, diversity and inclusion, and creating safe and equitable workplaces. SF Hillel is truly an organization you can be proud of, in which you can and should invest locally and have an impact nationally. As Hillel around the country continues to thrive, I wanted to share just a few key lessons learned from the experience of the Hillel professionals here and around the country over the last several years that are shaping Hillel's approach to build Jewish life. Things have changed for young adults. So what are some of the key lessons? One, we must embrace a network-centric approach to build Jewish life. Young adults organize themselves through a multiplicity of social networks, both online and off. Organizations that are porous and allow fluent involvement will be more successful at diversifying and growing those engaged in Jewish life. Jason, Emily, and Noah are great examples of that as a student experience architect at SF Hillel. I encourage you to seek them out today and ask them how they do their work. It's, it's magnificent. Secondly, they identify and employ social connectors. Nothing new here. Every community, no matter how formal or informal, has that person or group of people who knows everyone and takes great pride in making connections between them and their friends. Hillel's program nationally and locally rises or falls on employing the right people who build Jewish life as a natural extension of who they are. Invest deeply in network hubs. hubs. Students who are charged with activating their own networks need ongoing training and support. So do the Hillel professionals who mentor and hold the students accountable. Hillel spends increasing amounts of time and resources to build learning communities and offering training for its professionals locally and nationally. And here I'll go off script for 10 seconds and just say, for those of you who are involved in other boards around, this, around the city and around the country, invest in your people. They are the natural resource that you have of which your programs will rise and fall. As I've often said in these speeches, if the health of your body is somehow related to the skill of your doctor, so it correlates that the health of the Jewish community is completely related to those that run it. They must be invested in and developed. And finally, allow the 
substance of students' life to dictate the content. Yes, of course, Jewish literacy is a goal, but professionals primarily should be using Jewish education on, campus, on campuses and learning experience as a mirror on students' lives, enabling them to see the beautiful wisdom of our tradition, speaking to the questions most pertinent in their lives today, and inviting them to the age-old Jewish tradition of the ongoing dialogue of generation, and generations. SF Hillel is inclusive. SF Hillel builds community. SF Hillel takes care of people. SF Hillel welcomes everybody. SF Hillel is a home for so many. So how strikingly appropriate that they, with infinite wisdom, have chosen to honor my dear friends and many of our dear friends, Dev and Larry. For those of us who know them well, you immediately understand how true my words are. Just like Hillel, Deb and Larry are experts in building community. I can talk about their involvement in a plethora of organizations in our community, many in key leadership roles, the Ocean Marine JCC, Congregation Cultural Bar, Jewish Federation, Camp Newman, SF Hillel, of course, Jewish Community High School, Brandeis Marin, Jewish Family and Children Service, to name just a few. Now just take a moment for a second and think about all the list that I just read encompasses. In a world increasingly silent and, and perspectives becoming increasingly narrowed, Deb and Larry have a big tent. That list of organizations I just named covers Jews and non-Jews, young and old, Jewish education, both formal and informal, take it, taking care of those who are in desperate need, engaging young adults, and so much more. While never seeking attention, they have also not been afraid to step up and lead. That's, Deb summed it up very well in an interview I came across as I was thinking about this speech in a discussion she was talking about with the Women's Philanthropy Division of the Jewish Federation, when asked why she is involved, she answered in her always clear and concise manner. And I quote, I love being Jewish. My involvement in the Jewish community is motivated by my love and passion for building community in any way that I am called upon to do so. I volunteer heavily in the community for the sake of my family, my friends, and the next generation." End quote. <laughs> Powerful words indeed. Call Israel out of Eden Zelazay. Probably the first time you might have heard Hebrew with a Scottish accent. <laughs> are responsible for one another. The Jewish emphasis on community and caring for each other is inherent in our tradition and Deb and Larry are exemplars of that tradition. However, I would be remiss in sharing with you another inside joke. Another way they build community. One that has become, that has become especially meaningful meaningful for my family and countless others. Here's what happens. At approximately 7.30 p.m. PM every Friday evening, and by every Friday, by the way, I mean like 45, 48 times a year, okay? So pretty much every Friday. A group of people, never less than 14, and sometimes as many as 35, sit down to have Shabbat dinner at Shea Stadner in Foss Avenue in San Anselmo. Now, five, my family moved to Marin from the Midwest in 2010, 2010. We didn't know them, they didn't know us, but the invitation came and it never stopped. Well, we just never stopped showing up. I'm not <laughs> sure. The Feinstone family, like many others in this room, are at that table at least once a month but more than likely twice, and sometimes three times a month. 
Here's the flow. It's the same every single week. We gather. Deb and Larry welcome. We light candles. We bless kids. We say Kiddush. We talk about the Torah portion. Their son Jacob makes us all laugh. We say a healing prayer silently for those in need, sadly too many. We wash, we say hamotzi, and we eat. The food is amazing. Larry's salad and Deb's chicken are famous. The conversation is stimulating, covering a multitude of topics with people chiming in up and down the length of a huge long dining room table. It's all good. Yes, 